Well, the movie's about uh, two neighbouring families, one English and one Australian. Uh, one, the Australian is a worker and the Englishman is uh, a manager who's uh, just sacked uh, Dougie's best mate, uh, Norm, and has bought Norm's house on the cheap. And uh, so everybody, of course, resents him bitterly. The, the Aussie guys play backyard cricket all the time. They're all cricket fanatics and... Uh, there's a, there's a, a dreadful accident involving uh, the Englishman's cat, which uh, is hit by a tennis ball and falls into the barbecue and is incinerated. <laughs> and uh, so the ashes in question, the backyard ashes, are the cat's ashes, which have been scraped into a Vegemite jar, and uh, and they play uh, play a grudge match, grudge ashes match. It's, it's a very uh, it's a very funny film. Uh, it's it's got a a real sense of charm about it, you know, like, funnily enough, and uh, and it's very affectionate, you know. It's a, a very affectionate look at the Aussie backyard. So in terms of that too, I guess when we look at the Australian culture and your role over many years in, in Australian film and television, what is it that you think is significant about our industry here in this country? Oh, uh, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I actually don't feel, you know, you're sort of asking the wrong person in a way, I, I, I actually don't feel like a member of the film industry. This is the first film I've made in 35 years. I certainly am a member of the television and theatre industry, but um, I, I still think it's dreadfully important that we tell our own stories with our own voice. And, uh, you know, it's all very well to, to make American movies here and bring everything in from overseas, but I just don't think that expresses what we are, who we are. And this film, funnily enough, does express, you know, there, there are a couple of characters in our team, uh, one, one who's a, a, a Muslim Pakistani and a, and a Japanese guy, and it's not, their race isn't even remarked on, you know, like they're just there. Taking out that gold Logie in 2006, finally. Yeah, um, well, it was a... You know, it's sort of a mixed blessing. I've virtually not worked on television since. Um, I've, I've, I've got a small continuing role in the Dr Blake Mysteries, which is a lot of fun. I think uh, Craig McLaughlin's fantastic in that. And uh, I think, it's, I think by and large, it's a very good series. But, you know, although, you know, I noticed in the Green Guide this week, the Melbourne Age Green Guide, that uh, people are picking on historical inaccuracies, which is... I guess, I guess you lay yourself open to that when you set something in the 50s and then play it to a whole lot of baby boomers. <laughs> <laughs> but when we look at the television industry, film, theatre, uh, and that occurring here in this country, and we look at the young people coming through, what would be your message in terms of encouraging those people in the industry? Is it still worth getting involved in? Oh, look, I, I, it's a hard question to answer, you know, like the, my immediate response, of course, would be to say, stay away, stay away from it. But it's, um, you can't, you know, if, you, if you've got that bug, you can't keep away, you know, like uh, the young people of the day will be just as driven towards it as I was. And... Uh, I mean, I was only ever interested really in working in the theatre and, you know, the television career has been a, a sort of a sidelight, really. Um, and this, as I said, is the first film I've made for 35 years and it's, uh, it's wonderful to, to do something that, while it's, while it's very small, low budget, has been enormously successful. I mean, it's really punching far above its weight and I think it's a really good... It's a really good example of what young people can look forward to doing. You know, this, this film was completely financed by Mark Rentel in Wagga. You know, like, and it was financed, the money was donated by local builders and plumbers and shopkeepers, butchers and individuals, uh, you know, and a couple of major companies. And the film was made for, you know, the budget that they had was two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. Well, John, we certainly wish you every success in Twenty Four and Beyond, and thank you for taking time to talk to us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All the best.